We thank you, Jesus, for the gift of your life for us. We thank you for our family. We thank you for uh, those that are not here, but we pray blessing upon them. We pray blessing upon all that are together today. May we experience the peace that passes all understanding. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Grandpa, thank you so much for all the lessons, um, jokes, and social presence you taught me to have um, at all times. I can, can not thank you enough for everything that you represented and um, showed me throughout my life. Um, you know, because of you, I get to claim the title of Oki within my bloodline, and uh, that actually reminds me of uh, one of the very first jokes I remember you telling me was um, you asked me, why do Okies have hunchbacks and flat foreheads? It's because when you ask them a question, they go, I don't know. And then when you tell them the answer, they go, ah. And I just remember the way you presented that, and you just said the joke and walked away. You didn't even laugh at yourself or anything. You just walked away like you dropped the mic on it. And uh, just the ability to captivate an audience, no matter how small, no matter how big, um, it represented the fact that people respected what you had to say, whether it was going to be humor or a lesson or an order at, on the construction site or around the house. Um, no matter what it was going to be, people, uh, you had people's ear. And that comes from being a consistent, diligent, um, God-loving man. And I appreciate that. And it's something that everyone in our, in our house and, and um, our family strive for. And so thank you so much for everything you represented. Thank you so much for the generosity you showed us throughout our years. And we sure are going to miss you. Love you, Grandpa. To most people, my name has always been Brianne. But to Grandpa, for as long as I can remember, he's always called me Brulian. And I will never forget that I was always his Brulian. He's been the person that took baths in the swimming pool with hand soap. <laughs> He's been the person that would give me a dime for Coke and say, don't spend it all at once. He's the person when I'd ask if I could go swimming, he would say, sure, just don't drink the water. You'll drown. <laughs> He's the one who gave me the keys to the golf cart and told me I can drive it. But if I crash, then I get the keys taken away. I'll never forget so many good things. But I'll always remember being his Brulean. That he was. He took time for just me. And everyone. And um, he was always the same and will always be the same for us. I love you, Grandpa. A place I know. I start packing my bags for a familiar trip, yet I know a new adventure is in store for me. Late at night, my family and I begin our long car ride. Excited and fighting away sleep, I look back to the city lights. Goodbye for now. Then slowly, quietly, I doze off with dreams about a place I know. Rubbing my eyes, I wake up from an uncomfortable sleep. Out the window, I see rows and rows of trees. Someone might feel lost at a sight like this, especially in the middle of the night. Not me, for this was the last road before arriving to a place I know. Finally, a recognizable light down the road. It gets closer, closer. Hearing the little pebbles under the car tires and feeling dad hit the brakes meant we have finally reached a place I know. Jumping out of the car, carrying only a pillow in my hand, I walk as straight as a sleepy kid can to be the first to the door. Knocking, I wait. Soon, I see a faint light coming on. I can hear footsteps coming down the hall. I know who's coming to greet me. The big door opens. It's Grandma. She is happy to see me. She is relieved to see my whole family is safe. She warmly invites me in. Knowing exactly where I sleep in her house, I head straight for my bed, made of quilts, brown comfy sleeping bags, and sheets that smell like a place I know. The morning arrives quickly. The first thing I hear is Grandpa and Dad talking in the kitchen. I push the sliding door 
expecting a special greeting. My grandpa, holding a fresh cup of coffee, says, Hey there, kiddo, and reaches out for a hug with a strong pat on my back. I am welcomed in this place, a place I know. Thinking about all I can do today, I quickly get dressed. I begin to remember all the grand adventures I have in this place. Many hot summer days running back and forth in my swimming suit, to the pool, to the sandbox, and out to the big field, splashing in the waters of irrigation, playing cowboys on the red wagon, tea in the train, playing house in the willow tree, and many games of hide and go seek at night. Oh, and that golf cart, grandpa's favorite carving tool for his trees. Here. I would run wild and free with eyes of affection watching over me in this place, a place I know. Once outside, a chill causes me to look at the colors of the trees. Along with the familiar fragrances, the field becomes my own living calendar, expressing the freshness of spring, the fruits of summer, the warmth of autumn, and the frost of winter. In this place, each season holds continuous memories from brightly painted Easter egg hiding in the front yard to smells of fireworks lit on the 4th of July. Then the twinkle of grandma's Christmas tree holding golden treasures delicately positioned for me to enjoy. Celebrations from picnics, birthdays, weddings, baby showers, anniversaries, graduations, and reunions were all held in this place, a place I know. As I stroll onto the lawn, recognizable shadows take form of the many people who have been invited to this place, all welcomed, all encouraged to come together in fellowship. Some guests, neighbors, lots of friends, but most of all family, one family, our family, made of aunts, uncles, cousins, and generations of love, all gathered in this place, a place I know. What's most amazing about this place, I know, it's not made up, it's not someone else's, or a dream, it is real, it is mine, it is my grandparents' house. This is the place I know. Uh, Grandpa, we love you so much. We thank you for the opportunity. We were able to start our marriage together and our lives together right here, uh, right on your property. We appreciate everything you've done for us. Uh, we sure are going to miss you, and uh, we'll celebrate the life and all the good times we've been able to have together. Love you, Grandpa. The biggest thing that I just want to share that I experienced was just the love that radiated from these two people. But he always made me feel welcome, and I never once felt like I was a married and two grandchild. I always felt like I was just one of the other grandchildren. And um, I really appreciate that and love that. Not many people get to be blessed enough to so easily call um, in-laws grandma and grandpa so easily and feel weird about it but I never did and it was it was all just easy to love them and feel loved around them so blessed to have known him and been part of his family Th these are my siblings this is my newborn sister Lila there's this one story he told us that him and 20 other men cut down this giant oak tree in the middle of the road and they had to move, move it. I remember when we would come over and he would say, I know these kids. This one's George, that one's Sam, and the one over there is John. We're gonna miss, miss you, you, Grandpa. Grandpa. And my favorite memory of Grandpa Cat is when he always was funny, just like with his jokes. My favorite memory uh, is that Grandpa Cat always made silly games. My favorite memory was that he was funny. One of our favorite memories of Grandpa was how he would always make us laugh, um, whether it be with a joke or calling us by the wrong name or making up a name for us. Um, it would always uh, make us laugh and we had a lot of fun with him just playing around like that. One of my favorite jokes that I remember um, I'll share with you a guy sitting at his house and he hears a knock on his door so he gets up answers the door and there's nobody there but he sees a snail sitting on his porch so he picks up the snail 
and he throws it as far as he can in his backyard and goes back to his chair. Um, about a year goes by and he hears another knock on his door. So he gets up, he answers, and it's that same snail sitting on the porch and the snail says, what was that all about? <laughs> and so uh, those kind of jokes were just so funny and uh, they stuck out of my mind and we get to share those with our kids and we're just gonna never forget those grandpa jokes that he would say.